When I came back from the hospital after giving birth, I was greeted by a scene that left me utterly speechless. In the mere span of four days, our living room had transformed into a chaotic mess. The air was thick with the smell of decay emanating from forgotten, moldy food. Half-eaten bowls of instant noodles adorned the dining table, their contents a murky soup with bits of food eerily still. The floor was a minefield of plastic containers and trays, now the breeding ground for a horde of tiny pests. As my husband, in an attempt to swat a particularly persistent bug, casually mentioned he had been waiting for my return, his reasoning became clear. He believed that maintaining the house was solely my duty and had let the room fall into disarray until my discharge. His reaction to my disgust was to simply frown and demand that I clean the mess immediately, leaving me speechless. My name is Sophia, and I am a 30-year-old who has been loyal to the same company since my college graduation. I've always been content with my job, grateful for the guidance of esteemed colleagues and the camaraderie among friends. Through my career, I've gained invaluable knowledge and experience. My life took a significant turn when I married Jack, a colleague of mine who is T-H-R-E-E -E years my senior. We continued to work together post-marriage, competing yet complementing each other professionally. Our relationship thrived on mutual inspiration and support, especially when facing challenges. Our marriage was blissful, and a year into it, the joy of discovering I was pregnant was unparalleled, especially since we had both eagerly anticipated starting a family. Upon sharing our joyful news of pregnancy with our families, the reaction was heartwarming. Tears of happiness were particularly noticeable from my in-laws, who have shown me nothing but kindness since Jack and I began our journey together. They fully supported our decision to marry, and over time, I've developed a special bond with my mother-in-law. We've grown so close that we even spend holidays together. Both sets of parents have been incredibly understanding and supportive. My mother is an amazing woman who chose to leave her job behind to dedicate herself to our family. Despite the demands of his career, my father has always made sure to express his love and appreciation for us all, setting a wonderful example of dedication and affection. Jack often remarks on the deep love and respect his parents share, highlighting the strength of their relationship, which inspires us. Since tying the knot, my mother-in-law has occasionally expressed her concern for our welfare as a newly married couple. She talks about the evolving dynamics of modern relationships, emphasizing the importance of happiness and balance in our lives. Her worry that continuing to work might add to the challenge of managing household responsibilities was evident. Jack and I have always split our chores evenly, a fact I shared with her to ease her concern, and she was visibly comforted by this. Moving in together after getting married was a significant step for us, having lived separately before. My mother-in-law's initial concerns about our adjustment to living together were understandable, but Jack's kindness and consideration throughout our relationship reassured me that we could support and care for each other effectively. Jack has been true to his word, always sharing in household responsibilities and never leaving the burden on me alone. With the news of our pregnancy, he became even more supportive, insisting that I lean on him more during this time. He took on more chores, especially as I battled morning sickness and sometimes had to miss work. I felt guilty for not being able to contribute as I used to, but Jack's consistent effort to ease my responsibilities showed me the depth of his care and commitment. During those tough early months, Jack's unwavering support was a reminder of the strong foundation of our relationship. Despite my feelings of inadequacy due to my health, he reassured me that we're in this together, emphasizing the importance of supporting one another, especially now as we prepare to welcome our child into the world. Today, I found myself unable to do much of anything, but Jack reassured me there was no need for apologies. Being accustomed to living alone, he effortlessly took over the household chores, reminding me that my main task was to nurture our growing baby. He admitted he couldn't fully grasp the challenges of pregnancy, insisting on taking care of all domestic duties himself, always prioritizing my well-being above everything else. Lately, Jack has immersed himself in learning about parenthood, diligently reading books and soaking in new information. Witnessing his dedication, I felt deep in my heart that choosing to spend my life with him was the best decision I've ever made. My pregnancy journey has been smooth, 
largely due to the unwavering support from our families, including frequent visits from my parents and in-laws, which played a significant role in the healthy development of our baby. As my due date drew near and my belly expanded, I took maternity leave to focus on my health, embracing a serene lifestyle despite the growing difficulty in mobility. Though outings became challenging, I never missed a prenatal appointment, mindful of my weight based on medical guidance. Entering the final stretch, my mother-in-law, ever so thoughtful, began accompanying me to my checkups, insisting on carrying heavier items. Her constant care made me feel both guilty and profoundly thankful. She explained that helping me was not only a concern for my well-being, but also beneficial for her own health, turning our trips to the doctor into a comforting routine. However, during one of these routine visits, an unexpected sharp pain seized me, prompting immediate attention from the doctor. Amidst my anxiety, the calm and reassuring voice of the doctor announced the onset of labor. It was time to prepare for the baby's arrival. The sudden realization that I was about to become a mother filled me with a mix of excitement and nervousness, unprepared emotionally for the moment. My mother-in-law's reassuring presence eased my fears. Promising to stay by my side, she quickly volunteered to gather the necessities from home, ensuring I had everything needed for the birth. Her comforting words helped me settle into a state of readiness, gradually embracing the reality of meeting my baby soon buoyed by her promise of return and the support surrounding me. As she dashed out of the hospital, my mother-in-law promised to get in touch with Jack. When she came back, her immediate concern was for my comfort, asking if the pain had eased and if I was managing okay. Grateful for her support, I thanked her profusely. She brushed off my thanks, suggesting that Jack might manage to leave work early to be there for the birth. She had also reached out to my parents, a detail I had overlooked amidst the whirlwind of labor and preparations. My parents living a town over were uncertain if they could arrive in time, but they promised to hurry. Soon after, my father-in-law arrived at the hospital, his presence a silent beacon of support. My parents made it later, and together, we navigated through the intensifying labor pains, their encouragement bolstering my spirits. As the contractions grew closer together, my anxiety spiked, yet the comfort of having my family nearby was immeasurable. After enduring several hours into the night, I welcomed our baby into the world, a moment of profound joy mixed with an ache for Jack's absence, who was supposed to have left work early to join us. The morning after, there was still no sign of Jack. My in-laws tried to reach him, concerned he might be in trouble, but all attempts to contact him were fruitless. His absence became increasingly worrying, especially after my father-in-law found our home silent and Jack's workplace confirmed he had planned to leave early for the hospital. Confusion and concern enveloped the family, considering whether to involve the police as Jack was missing from both home and work. The tension heightened until, finally, in the afternoon, we received word that Jack had arrived at the hospital. My initial relief at the news, however, was quickly overshadowed by the unfolding situation. My nerves were on edge worried about Jack's whereabouts. When he finally entered the room, my attempt to speak faltered, silenced by the sight of him. He casually mentioned the birth of our baby, his appearance unkempt, and the scent of alcohol lingering around him. I was taken aback, unable to comprehend how he chose this moment to drink. His attention quickly shifted to his phone, ignoring our newborn. Struggling to keep my voice steady, I asked him where he had been. Jack's sleepy response did little to calm me. He admitted to drinking with friends, claiming he couldn't refuse an old buddy and had overslept as a result. His eyes remained glued to his phone, igniting a fury within me that I barely managed to contain. Before I could express my dismay, Jack's father intervened, scolding him for prioritizing a night out over the birth of his child. Jack's attempts to explain were cut short by the undeniable anger from his father who quickly left the room in a mix of frustration and haste, without so much as a glance at me or the baby. Jack's absence lingered for the remainder of my hospital stay. With the birth behind us and the baby and I in good health, thanks to my family's unwavering support, we were ready to go home. As our departure neared, my mother-in-law reassured my parents of their commitment to care for us. On the day of our discharge, I emailed Jack to inform him. His immediate call caught me off guard. He sounded eager to pick us up, hinting perhaps at a change of heart. 
I had intended to leave with my parents, but Jack's offer to drive us hinted at a possible reconciliation. After Jack informed his parents that he would pick us up, they left the hospital visibly relieved. I extended my gratitude to the hospital staff for their care and support before we departed. Once everything was settled, Jack and I, along with our new baby, headed home in his car. Despite his earlier absence and the lack of an apology for his behavior, Jack seemed in high spirits, acting as if the past incidents had never occurred. The moment we arrived home, the physical discomfort from the birth became more pronounced. The resilience and dedication of mothers, enduring pain yet wholly committed to their children, crossed my mind, stirring a mix of anxiety and admiration within me. Jack's previous excitement about parenting offered a glimmer of hope, making me think we could still navigate this new chapter together, despite any current tensions. However, as we entered our house, an unsettling odor greeted us. Confused about its source, Jack casually opened the living room door, and I was immediately overwhelmed by a stench akin to rotting trash, causing a wave of nausea. Jack's response was dismissive demanding I clean up the mess with an unearned confidence, insisting he couldn't stand the smell any longer. Holding our baby, I barely kept myself from crumbling under the strain. I confronted Jack about the state of our home, questioning how he could neglect our living space to such an extent. His indifferent reply revealed a disturbing negligence. The house was littered with unwashed dishes, laundry, and refuse, barely recognizable as the home we once took pride in. In disbelief and frustration, I raised my voice, unable to reconcile the man who had once shared in our household responsibilities with the person before me. Jack, unfazed and smirking, provocatively suggested that housework was my domain, especially given my dedication to my job up until my maternity leave. He implied that such tasks were expected of me, the wife, as if my return home was meant to signal a resumption of traditional roles without consideration for my current state or the collective responsibility we share in our home and as parents. Upon my return home from the hospital, Jack presented a baffling excuse for the chaos that awaited us. He claimed he left the housework undone on purpose, thinking I would feel left out if there was nothing for me to do post-discharge. This rationale was beyond my understanding. Jack settled himself on the couch amidst the buzzing of insects, acting as if our living room wasn't a disaster area. Faced with no clean space for the baby, I confronted him, demanding he at least hold our child while I attempted to clean, expressing my disbelief at the situation he expected me to manage. Jack's retort only added fuel to the fire. He questioned why he should be involved in household chores or childcare, labeling them as my responsibilities, not his. His words were sharp, accusing me of being overbearing and dismissing my condition post-birth as no longer relevant. His attitude was dismissive, his sighs heavy with annoyance. At my breaking point, tears fell as I questioned how he could change so drastically, voicing my pain and confusion. Instead of showing any sign of empathy, Jack struck his own cheek, as though bracing himself for a difficult task, and declared it was time for him to educate me on being a more useful wife, implying that his leniency had somehow spoiled me. He framed his unwillingness to share in our domestic life as a form of responsibility, proudly stating his role in bringing us home from the hospital as evidence of his commitment, then announced plans to go out, leaving me to tackle the mess alone. As Jack walked out, leaving behind a home in disarray and a heart full of sorrow, I stood bewildered, grappling with the profound shift in the man who had once been my partner and support. Tears mingled with those of our waking baby, a symbol of the innocence caught in the midst of our turmoil. Overwhelmed by a sense of isolation and the daunting task of single-handedly maintaining a semblance of order for the sake of our child, I cried out for understanding, for help, for any sign of the love and partnership that once defined us. Seated at the entrance of our home, I reached out to my mother through my smartphone, desperately needing a comforting voice. She answered immediately. Her words a swift promise of action, she was already on her way. As I relayed the day's harrowing events to her, she suggested that the front porch would be a better refuge than the chaos within our walls. Holding my baby close, tears streamed down my cheeks as we awaited their arrival. It wasn't long before my parents pulled up, their presence a much-needed relief. But to my surprise, my in-laws joined them, having met en route to our home. 
My mother-in-law's first act was to apologize profusely for the situation, her eyes brimming with tears, indicating they too harbored doubts about Jack's behavior towards me. My parents, quick to support, pointed out that Jack was the root of the turmoil. Amidst apologies and shared concerns, my father-in-law's silence was telling, his anger palpable though unvoiced, signaling a storm brewing beneath his calm exterior. They revealed their unsuccessful attempts to reach Jack, their worry for me turning into a collective effort to address the immediate crisis at hand. My mother-in-law, once she gathered herself, insisted on taking me and the baby away from the mess, promising they would handle the cleanup. Gratefully, I followed her lead while my parents and father-in-law prepared to tackle the daunting task inside. As we drove away, I couldn't shake off the guilt, despite the turmoil Jack had caused. Meanwhile, back at the house, the collective gasp of our families probably echoed through the halls as they confronted the extent of the neglect. The once inviting home had turned into a battleground against neglect and filth. Hours later, upon our return, the transformation was nothing short of miraculous. The efforts of our families had eradicated the pests, cleared out the trash, and banished the foul odors that had taken over our home. Every corner of the house now breathed a bit easier the air fresher and the spaces welcoming once again, thanks to the loving labor of our parents and in-laws. The day had started with despair but ended with a reminder of the strength and support family can provide, even in the face of overwhelming challenges. That evening, as I sat down to a home-cooked meal prepared by my mother and mother-in-law, I couldn't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude towards our families. It had been some time since I'd enjoyed a meal made by someone else and after the dietary precautions I'd taken during pregnancy, every bite tasted incredibly good. The warmth of the meal momentarily eased my frustration with Jack. As we were settling in, the doorbell's ring broke the tranquility of the evening. My father-in-law offered to see who it was, pressing the intercom button with a calmness that I found myself rushing to emulate. To our collective surprise, he recognized Jack at the door, accompanied by a stranger. Quietly so as not to wake the baby, we all moved to greet them. Standing at the door was a visibly distressed Jack, his face marked by tears, and beside him, a man introduced himself as Scott, Jack's friend. Scott apologized profusely for taking Jack out, especially given the recent events with his wife and newborn. I signaled for him to stop apologizing and focused on Jack, who was still overcome with emotion. Scott then shared a troubling account of the evening, revealing that Jack had bragged about winning an argument with me. When pressed for details, Jack's story alarmed Scott, who admonished him to return home. Despite his advice, Jack remained unrepentant, prompting Scott to bring him back, regretful for any upset cause. Jack, looking up from his despair, suddenly lashed out, arguing that losing an argument didn't warrant physical violence and insisted, in a misguided attempt at justification, that household and childcare duties were exclusively a wife's responsibility. Scott admitted to overreacting, but questioned Jack's sudden shift in attitude, noting that such views were uncharacteristic of the man he knew before my hospital stay. Confronted with Jack's assertion that household tasks and childcare were traditionally women's roles, a claim he believed was universally acknowledged, I found myself at a loss. The stark contrast between the supportive, caring partner I remembered and the person before me, now echoing outdated stereotypes, left me searching for understanding amidst the profound changes in his perspective. In the midst of a heated debate, I challenged Jack's newfound beliefs, sparked by dubious online forums. Jack, in an attempt to justify his stance, showed us a website he'd been following, which disparaged housewives and promoted outdated views on gender roles. The website, filled with negative stereotypes and biased comments, seemed to have influenced Jack deeply especially during my absence in the hospital. He had immersed himself in this toxic environment, mistakenly believing that neglecting his responsibilities at home was justified. The content Jack shared was alarming, claiming that household chores and childcare are solely women's duties because of supposed inferior earning capacity and natural childcare abilities. This misguided perspective left me speechless, especially considering my plans to return to work after maternity leave where I had always been an equal contributor. My family's reaction was immediate and fierce. 
Both sets of parents express their dismay and disbelief at Jack's transformation, unable to reconcile the son they knew with the person before them. Scott, Jack's friend, reached his limit, declaring he could no longer associate with someone holding such regressive views, effectively ending their friendship. I questioned Jack directly, unable to understand why he would value the opinions of strangers online over those of his family and friends who knew him and our situation intimately. My mother then addressed Jack with a calm but authoritative voice, making it clear that our family does not subscribe to the toxic values he found online. She warned him that if he continued down this path, he risked being left alone, as we would not support such beliefs. My father added a stern ultimatum, emphasizing our unwillingness to expose me or our baby to such an environment. He reassured me, saying I always had a home to return to if the situation became untenable. This show of familial solidarity left Jack visibly shaken, caught between the virtual echo chamber he'd been ensnared by and the real-life consequences of those beliefs. As he looked up, attempting to find words, it was clear the reality of his situation and the potential loss of his family was beginning to dawn on him. Upon witnessing my reaction, Jack's demeanor shifted profoundly. He conveyed a heartfelt confession, acknowledging the paramount importance of our relationship and his aspiration to be a commendable husband. He admitted to being misled by the vast, yet often misleading, expanse of the internet. Tears welled up in his eyes as he embraced me, apologizing for his misguided actions and the hurt they caused. In the midst of this emotional moment, Jack's father, with a steady and gentle voice, posed a critical question, challenging Jack to reflect on his upbringing and the values demonstrated within their family. He inquired if he had ever implied that household responsibilities should fall exclusively on women. This question brought Jack to a realization. His father had always been a pillar of support for their family, a model of partnership and respect. Jack's apology extended to his parents, acknowledging his deviation from the values he was raised with attributing his confusion to the distorted perspectives he encountered online. Witnessing this, my parents offered me their unconditional support, emphasizing that the choice of how to move forward was mine to make. After careful consideration, I addressed Jack, making it clear that while I forgave him this time, such a transgression could not reoccur. This incident served as a wake-up call for Jack, who began to actively participate in household and childcare duties. Through first-hand experience, he came to understand and appreciate the challenges and demands of these responsibilities. Despite my initial skepticism regarding his commitment, Jack's efforts were consistent, supported, and encouraged by our families. Together, we navigated the complexities of parenting, our bond strengthening in the process. Jack expressed his gratitude for my contributions and reassured me of his support, especially when work commitments called me away. Witnessing Jack's transformation and his genuine interaction with our child filled me with hope and confidence in his role as a father. As we settled into our new routine, I found myself looking forward to a future filled with love, understanding, and shared responsibility, cherishing the peaceful and fulfilling days ahead.